What is going on guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Still have some content from our CTE gameplay that we had for us this weekend. And I got a chance to um, now do some commentary on the Zebra raid, which I haven't been back to since when we uh, first had a little sneak peek of it with an earlier CTE weeks back. And that was um, in the white box text, uh, testing as well. So we didn't have all the textures that we have in this new CT. So it is nice to see a little bit more of the finished product. You see me here with the tank hunter class at the very beginning of the game. My little strap was I wanted to see if I could grab the tank hunter class really quick, get up on th to the moat, and try to lay down fire against those uh, torpedo boats and whatever other... Uh, ships may be going by. Fortunately, I made to my post a little bit too late and these players were able to um, Get onto land and now they're out here trying to cap a so you're gonna see the enemy player is gonna be posted up I think at the very back of the cards. I've noticed uh, already on the CT a lot of people on a like to be posting up right there You see it's gonna be, he's gonna be a little bit further up there to my right and I wasn't quite sure if he was gonna be maybe be hiding behind uh, these little crates right here, but once I saw he wasn't there, I figured, yeah, he's gonna be right here. So that's what a lot of people are doing. Um, I mean, not too, I'm not everyone, but just keep in mind some people might be doing that. But I'm gonna climb up on top of this ladder right here and get a better viewpoint onto everything else in the map since there's really no one gonna be spawned on here right now. But they actually call an artillery strike on me, so that was a, actually a pretty solid, um, <laughs> solid strike uh, right on me right there. So I just kind of pull back. Um, as I have my teammates going to get on top of the airship and um, take them out pretty fast. So um, my whole, again, approach was trying to want to get onto the moat and wanting to kind of hold down the enemy players, kind of like how you do with Cape Hellas, where on the, you know, defending side, you're trying to stop those attackers maybe from, you know, going off to the side of the beach instead of right straight forward to the beach. And since uh, Zebra Grade has the tank hunter class, I mean, it, it's like, I don't, it's like the perfect weapon in my opinion. Um, if you want to really hold these things down that are kind of like moving towards to you. So unfortunately in this gameplay, I didn't quite get to do that as well as I would have wanted to do. But the concept's still there and we'll see as this game, um, you know, progresses into the retail version of the game. See like how well it does as I begin to kind of... Yeah, fine tune a little bit and get uh, more precise at doing this little strat of mine because um, uh, yeah normally when I'm trying to um, on the attacking side at the very beginning of the game a lot of people are getting into some of those um, I'm not sure exactly what they're called those cannons right up here um, as you can see one is right there to my left and they're putting on some pretty heavy and accurate fire onto me with the boat so um, I've noticed a couple times of me just wanting to push straight over to A I'm running into this specific cannon right here that enemy players are taking me out with and yeah, so those are the little things that you kind of have to um, be aware of when you're pushing up here on the attacking side. I think I've pretty much stopped trying to push over there to A. And I think as of right now, I'm just pushing straight to E when I'm on the attacking side. And then I can go grab the boats um, off of the other side of, of uh, E. So right over here, um, if you're over there by E, you'll see there, you'll have boats that you can spawn onto. And if you want to maybe go take that boat and run it all the way down to A, and go pick up the tank hunter gun and then maybe go cap a if you want to or you can stay over there by e i think the um, elite class for the infiltrator spawns on e i think around the four minute mark so i haven't really gotten into depth on the spawn times and the respawn times just because i don't know they're kind of acting a little bit weird to me and I, I i'm not sure what dice is doing with them and they might change that up after the ct so i'm just kind of watching out for that but um, as you see right there, we had an infiltrator class which dropped down in the um, in the water, and I, it's one thing I have noticed, and this is not the first time I shot an infiltrator in the water. Lately, I've been watching whenever I see those artillery strikes take place, and I know that it was the infiltrator that called it in, especially on some of these areas where I knew right where he shot it. I know that not enough players know about the um, way to control your airstrike so i know they're pretty much in the vicinity to, to shoot that shot that he was at so i knew he had to be in the water so i've been noticing a lot lately on this map that it's a big giveaway to tell me where you're at with the infantry class 
and it you're a sitting duck if you go into the water with any of the elite classes since you can't have like a pistol or anything like that with that class so I, I had another situation too where someone was in the water and I just I, I knew the infantry was in the water and I knew he jumped in there just because of where he placed his artillery strike so that just gave him away I jumped in the water I was easy able to um, you know, shooting with my pistols, nothing you can do. So keep that in mind. If you have a, a you know, enemy player who's pretty savvy and can pick up exactly why that artillery strike is coming in, who is it coming in from, and gets an idea of where that positioning of the artillery strike is taking place, he'll probably figure out that you're probably in the water and he's going to jump in there and easily take you out. So keep that in mind as right now a lot of players still don't know about how to control the artillery strike a little bit. And so because of that, it's uh, a pretty dead giveaway in my opinion so I was able to take advantage of that and I'm not sure if he was at full health but I wouldn't be surprised even at full health if one shot was a tank hunter class can take out that elite class so I mean with one shot with a tank hunter class takes out about 90% of damage for the MG08-15 and the Villa Perosa. so I can't imagine that the tank hunter class can't one shot the infantrator class so yeah, definitely keep that in mind as you are using these elite classes on the map. Now, unfortunately, I was got a little bit overrun. I knew they were going to spawn where uh, those players were at, and um, that one scout class put a god shot on me, um, or somewhat of a solid shot on me right in the back of my head. I was already pretty weak, but uh, that's a little bit unfortunate when it comes to you using the tank under class is I don't have any of those like uh, um, smoke grenades that at least the infantry class has. So... Um, now this guy is just going to jump in the water and he's just going to disappear on me. So, I mean, I don't know where he was going, but I gave that one up pretty quick. Um, but yeah, this was a kind of an interesting uh, gameplay that I had overall right here. A lot of kind of interesting stuff, but um, yeah, fortunately that uh, scout class got a good shot at me in the back of my head and was able to finish me off now. Um, I'm kind of going to try to push my way back over Cap B. I, I do believe right now the tank owner class is respawning in three minutes and it does seem to spawn actually I think at the very like beginning of the game it feels like I again I haven't gotten really a chance to check that but for the most part for this map it's been spawning at what seems to be at the almost at the very beginning of the game and then it's a respawn rate of three minutes so um, you know it's a little bit different than what's going on in Helgeland Bite I think the tank hunter class is spawning around the four minute mark uh, so again you can pick this up very fast and then do damage on the actual um, you know enemy team from rolling up so I mean you do have a little bit of a distance if you want to get onto the moat so that's a little bit of a disadvantage but you possibly could just take it over there by A and maybe go spawn um, you know when you're, over there, when you're over there by A you can maybe go take it down where the beach is at and maybe you know catch those attack boats who have just started off pushing at the very beginning of the game as you saw what happened to me and hopefully you can maybe get some um, earlier fire on them to stop them from getting onto the beach and then you can then move your way up to the moat so that probably would have been a better, better situation um, in that part now I'm just gonna go straight over here I believe um, all the way back down to A because I know the tank under class is probably gonna spawn up here pretty soon and I might as well go and cap that base while I'm at it so that's kind of probably what I'm doing right now even though I have um, this vehicle, a bunch of torpedo boats, still you got still got to deal with. Not quite as crazy as it is on Helgeland Bite, but still needs to be respected, especially in the area by sea where there's uh, you know more uh, of uh, area for the torpedo boats to be able to get on to their turrets and take you out. They can even sometimes do a little bit of some stuff on D, possibly, and maybe a little bit here on the beach over here by A, as you see me get run over by another torpedo boat. So yeah, that was a bit unfortunate right there. Um, however, though, it, it's map is it still very much seems to play. You're gonna have more of a dominance when it comes to um, infantry gameplay, especially on the moat right there. Uh, this gameplay, the airships were able to survive a little bit longer, as it was a little a bit of a grind for my team on this game. As you saw earlier, that when I was trying to cap B after I died with a tank under class, I was getting you know bombarded by the actual airship that kind of threw me off so yeah the airship lasted a little bit longer which is a bit surprising and kind of goes to show how much of a grind this game was because especially on this map seems like the airship is actually um, getting destroyed pretty quick so uh, yeah this goes to show a little bit again how my teammates kind of struggle a little bit on this map but um, for the most part it, it, you know you, it's gonna be more uh, it felt more like you know you're not gonna have to deal with much of the airship at all not gonna have to deal with even that much with the actual um you know a destroyer 
Um, just on, on those actual, on the mode itself, kind of stays out of play. I mean, there's certain situations it can maybe come in and do some damage, but for the most part, nothing like it, what it is in Helgoland Bite. Now, one thing that is pretty interesting is you could possibly say this is probably another night map. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, the atmosphere kind of brightens up maybe a little bit more than this, I think. But for the most part, this is, you know, could be almost considered a night map. I wonder if it is considered a night map. I mean, it feels kind of nightish, I guess you could say, but... I mean, I'm not sure if that's like, you know, turning into evening, you know, where it's really cloudy. And there's a little bit more light that there is, and that's sometimes the clouds, I think, kind of part a little bit, get a little bit more light in. But, you know, some of those places on the moat can get kind of, you know, darkened, and you can't really see players. And so, yeah, definitely, um, you know, I'm not sure if it's considered a night map or not, but it's, it, it, for the kind of the environment that it brings, I think it's pretty cool. I would personally like to see... On this map, it's staying more kind of in the um, more nighttime feel, um, more of a darkish vibe towards to it. And then on the other map, Helgeland Bike, just keep it more, lean it more with the atmos atmosphere on the brighter side. So, because I like that, I don't know, that really nice <laughs> sunny beach feeling, I guess you could say, when it comes to that map. But, um, yeah, on this map, I uh, definitely like just kind of the darker feel that it brings. And uh, again, it feels like, again, like another night map. So, um, kind of struggling here, again, like I was saying, um, with my team. But I'm, I'm eventually going to come up and start picking up the pace just a little bit. I'm going to finish off um, some of this uh, AA gun that's right here. This is another reason why a lot of the uh, the airships can't really survive that much on its own. you got those that have to deal with. And even those other cannons that are up here can do some damage on the airship as well. And those cannons are pretty accurate. I think you're going to see a situation up here where I... I might blast the people across the map, and you man, you make you feel like, you know, you're, you know, a god with that cannon. But I think it's just how accurate that cam cannon is, as well as the, uh, the impact uh, zone for it. I bet it's pretty strong. So now I'm gonna drop down here by C, and if we are defending, their spawn over here by C is gonna be right there in front of me. So I'm waiting for them with my um, anti-tank rifle. I'm trying to pick off a few of them. Got a good shot on one of them. And this guy here is going to go just around um, those like boxes or crates right there. I'm able to pick them off just by the explosions. So I'm um, hopefully trying to get my teammates back somewhat into the game. I can hear a shotgun shot. So I figured there was a guy probably laying fire down, in which he was. And yeah, that was definitely um, what we needed a little bit of something there to, you know, take somewhat control back in the game. Hopefully you get to come back over here by B and uh, help my teammates hold down B over here i do believe they're going to spawn i think behind me to my right as you saw earlier when i was on b and we had that airship was laying fire on me and i got shot from the left so i'm kind of trying to watch it from that side i was actually doing a lot of gameplay earlier um with actually the attacker side so uh, coming from the defending side to understand a little bit where the spawners are i'm still a little bit rusty on that but trying to find like always those good locations where you can post up on where you have that good cover and you know you're maybe in that spot that people will overlook but at the same time i'm not so much in good cover and overlooked that i'm just staying there and not you know really doing damage on enemy players when they show up so i always kind of like having that balance between the two because you get some people who like just kind of hide on the map um, on the capture zone they don't move at all and that doesn't really do you any good because you know you get the enemy players that will start spawning on them and, you know, then they'll have more players on that actual capture zone and they'll cap it, you know, or you're just out there running around the circle, making yourself, you know, an easy target for anyone to pick you off. So I think a little bit of the balance between the two is always what I'm looking for when I'm on these capture zones. So um, that goes to show a little bit more still <laughs> if the gameplay works. I, mean, I guess I missed that guy. I guess he was in the water and he must have popped out just right when I jumped in. So he shot me from behind. And unfortunately, now they already have the tank hunter class, which is what I was hearing too. I mean, I mean, I tell you what, if the infiltrator, uh, you know, that little flare gun gives it away, just as much as the tank hunter shot get away. So always remember that. It's kind of interesting when it comes to some of these elite classes, especially like the trench raider class, that whenever you swing, you make that grunting noise. So it's pretty interesting to think that with these elite classes, they do these little things that give themselves away. So, especially when I'm hearing the tank hunter class, I'm just waiting to hear that this massive cannon fire so um that usually is what will always gives me for the tank under class and like i was saying earlier with the flare gun for the infantry class that one has been a dead giveaway twice now for me so um especially on these maps i'll be i'll be watching a lot to hopefully uh when i see enemy players get that elite class if they want to jump into the water i'm fine with it because that's uh um, basically a death sentence for you so 
I'm gonna roll back over here at least. I was, <laughs> I was able to survive this time. I didn't have a um, boat that would fire me in the back of my head. So um, I'm, I want to take out that airship, but I actually throw um, too much of smoke cover. And so I can't even see the airship anymore. And I think my teammates actually blow it up. So um, I've been wanting to try to place my smoke down maybe as in, it's somewhat of a better position. But, you know, on these turrets to give myself maybe a little bit of cover. So I mean, I, I can't get spotted as easily or something like that. I know it's, you know, still going to give me away when I'm blasting people with it. But, you know, I'm always trying to find that little bit of advantage that I can do, especially with my smoke. So I'm um, going to roll up over here by A. And this is kind of where I've been like posting up over here by A. I do think that they're going to spawn straight up ahead towards to me. Like I was saying earlier, I played more on the attacking side when I've been doing Zebra Raid than defending side. So I do know if I'm attacking and trying to cap A, they're actually going to spawn behind me. So, um, but I guess we're pretty much fine over here. No one really challenged us on this part. But for the most part, when I have played over here, I have noticed them to be a little bit more over here towards my left. So... Um, we've actually put actually put a really solid shot on that bow without a full vehicle. I think that was actually that's pretty crazy <laughs> It's pretty nice actually to get a uh, one you just <laughs> turn around and shoot your AT rod gonna get one full shot So uh, gameplay kind of picked up I think a little bit more at the end at the beginning where I was kind of getting um, You know picked off from you know uh, torpedo boats running me over or whatever But yeah, now I'm gonna come over here to this cannon and there's a lot to say about this cannon right here it, I mean I'll tell you what with the positioning of this cannon, with the optics and the explosive radius and just the power of its shells, I mean, you can, if you want to, really kind of hold down things over there by C. Um, you can even hold down some somewhat on B. I mean, C's, a, C's more open, but it's further away. And B is closer, but there is uh, some areas you can hide around. But I've even gotten picked off once already on B. Um, so I, I specifically make sure that if they have A, I'm kind of hiding behind some of those, um, what are they, like planks or whatever that, that are on the uh, on B right there that are stacked up, um, like wooden planks, so I, I'm like hiding around those, so that's kind of been my approach um, over there by, um, by B to kind of avoid that, but uh, when it comes to this gun, I mean, you can pretty much do some damage, maybe a little bit on C and B, which is something I've normally kind of stayed away with turrets, just because I, I unless I feel like I'm going to actually be doing you know some serious damage on enemy players i kind of stay away from them want to get back on to the capture zone but i mean that one's right there that you know if you have a d and e and they have b and c which is a very high possibility if you come over here and maybe flank from behind um they maybe have a b and c and your teammates has d and e and you can flank behind like this cap cap a you can definitely just lay heavy fire down and you know if you're you know have a three minute respawn time for the tank hunter class and just pick up the tank hunter class afterwards it's not anything i feel like that puts you too out of play i mean you have the majority of the territories and they're at a spot where you can just bombard them with fire from two really powerful guns so it's definitely a, an interesting option and i'm already seeing some people trying to utilize that already so um, now i'm going to come up and just kind of pick off these torpedo boats right here as one of them is going to bail and I want to see, make sure that there's no one left in the actual uh, vehicle right there. Now, unfortunately, they're coming back over here by A. I'm going to want to keep recap A, but I'm going to want to come over here and conserve some of my shots for the um, um, for the airship. Now, the nice thing is that at least when someone is in your way with the uh, gun, that no one can actually like do what they do with a turret. Where, if you noticed before, that they can jump in front of you with a turret. Um, or the, as given the AA gun, and if you're shooting with that gun, you'll end up um, killing yourself. So that's not the case for this uh, weapon, though. However, though, it's not much of a vertical type of weapon. So if you get, a, like I said, an airship right uh, over your head, you're just totally not going to be able to um, shoot at it at all. So um, got the enemy players though; they want to push up over here, over here by me, and try to take me out. But I'm watching out for that, and I want to make sure I finish off these airships. So, I think again, as the game progresses, I think I'm going to be more probably using this tank hunter class um, to do... I could probably do damage on the airship pretty fast. The airship is, you know, really easy to take out. But maybe things like the storage and like that, just be more of a nuisance and kind of prevent them from um, self-healing. I think it's going to probably be more of my strat um, as the game rolls out more. Just because you're going to, you know drain your ammo really quick 
And especially on maps like Helgoland Bite, you're going to, you know, find yourself kind of um, suffering a bit from those maps. Now, on this map here, it's a bit smaller, and because of that, it's uh, a little bit easier to get around the actual, you know, teammates who will give you some um, um, supplies. But, yeah, it's something I still kind of want to avoid. As you can see here, I'm going to go and try to, again, put more shots onto the destroyers. I don't think I take this one. I think someone else takes it. I was trying to. I was. I was getting kind of curious. Like I. I figured that there was a torpedo boat around. I figured they had to done some amount of damage. And when I was putting all that hull damage on it, I think I disabled it actually. Um, at one point, I was like kind of curious. I was thinking, you know, am I gonna get it? <laughs> and I think someone else picks it off after me. So. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things I just feel like I just don't want to be wasting all my ammo off of that when I could maybe focus on a, a torpedo boats and everything else and kind of leaving that for, you know, my teammates' torpedo boats or however other way they want to attack it, maybe even destroyers. So, you know, if I can take out some of the torpedo boats, uh, which is only, um, you know, three shots for this weapon, um, you know, maybe, you know, it gives my destroyer maybe a little bit more breathing room um, to kind of just fight. Uh, the enemy's destroyers, while the enemy destroyer has to fight our destroyer and our torpedo boats. And not to mention me, you know, shooting my uh, tank hunter gun whenever, you know, he feels like he might have gotten away and uh, might be able to think he can heal himself. So now I'm back over here by A trying to recap this. Fortunately, my teammate is able to drop me some ammo. So I'll be able to resupply myself. I'm kind of getting under this train right here. Again, I, I you don't see it in this gameplay, but I'm almost positive. I want to say that they do somewhat spawn a little bit over there to my uh, right there in front of me. Now that guy was a little more to my left. So yeah, again, they're over there on the other side of those tracks somewhere. <laughs> so just be heads up on that. And if you are the attacking side and you're the other team you're trying to cap A, they're on the other side of the tracks right here by my left. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to do this because um, yeah, that will, it will help you out definitely. Um, now we're going to, a couple more guys are going to show up right here. And, uh, yeah, I, I almost forgot about this play right here. So this was one of those plays where you kind of have to sit back and think about life afterwards. Um, because you're just like, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I hit that guy. So I just kind of sit here for a little bit and question um, the reality of existence. And um, then when I get my bearings together, I, I get back into the game. So I guess it's a little bit how the CT works. There's testing environments and just kind of the, um, the, the differential of players in different locations can make the ping kind of get kind of weird. Um, and that shot, maybe I did miss it, but it felt like I, I registered that shot, and yeah, it didn't turn out that way, so. Um, but I'm going to be back over here by D. D is pretty interesting, and something you probably want to watch out for as well, and what I've been noticing has been a little bit of a meta over here by D, especially if you have a lot of teammates who are just, you know, you were really trying to, you know, cap D, and you finally capped it, and then you see, like, one guy on the ticker part, but you have, you know, your whole squad there. She's so usually able to cap it. But that one guy's still there. And I've been noticing a lot that a lot of people are going to want to get into the water over there. Because you can get into that water with an actual boat themselves. If you want to maybe get a torpedo boat in there and lay down fire. Or some people are just hiding in the water. Waiting for the teammates to squad spawn on them. So that's going to happen a lot as the game progresses. So keep a lookout for that. Watching out. The moment you see that... Um, you know ticker uh, uh, pop up with a play enemy player on there um, you're gonna want to be on a lookout for someone probably gonna be in the water you know with their pistol so you know you gotta you know, have a little bit of respect going over there because you could get you know tapped especially if you're, you're rocking like the gasser like me or maybe even the Obra is gonna get a one good headshot onto you um, so yeah definitely have a respect for that as I, I would assume more players are gonna be doing that they're gonna be waiting for their teammates to squad spawn onto them and they're going to just be in a nuisance over there by D. So, um, yeah, it's definitely pretty interesting when it comes to D. Again, I'm back over here, as I said earlier, that they do spawn right there in front of me um, on here by C. And as you can see, definitely putting on some good damage on enemy players right there. But uh, that's basically it for there for that map. That was basically in the game there. We weren't able to really bring it back. We kind of struggled there, kind of getting into a rhythm basically at all the whole game. But um, I know there's a player over here I want to try to pick him off. Uh, but he kind of uh, eludes me a little bit there. So, um, but again, this is a pretty interesting map. I'm definitely enjoying it. I'm definitely hyped for really all these maps. And just overall, Turning Tides is, I think, a pretty solid, um, you know, uh, overall with all the maps all together. Even with other maps we've been playing like Akibaba. I think Akibaba is a pretty, actually, solid map for this infantry gameplay-wise. And even though Cape Palace, I think, is probably the weakest out of all these, all, all the four maps. I'm at the end of the day, it's nothing that's, you know, completely terrible, um, you know, in my opinion. So, um, you know, definitely I'm um, having a, a good time with Turning Tides. Um, let me know down below how you guys are feeling about these two maps. 
Um, I definitely think they're going to be both winners when it comes to the battlefield. But that's it for you guys today. I appreciate you guys being here. I am living, and I will catch you guys again later. Peace.